Hello, our fabulous chemistry students. Monaco is here. Noakes is here. We are doing page five and six, video three of the last unit on nuclear chemistry. Yeah, we need to know some of the basics, get some background information before we start doing yep. any math or none of that stuff. For sure. So let's see what we got for you. So what exactly is nuclear chemistry, Mr. Milks? It is the study of the changes that happen specifically in the nucleus, so protons and neutrons. Yep. Uh, we're going to study radioactive emissions, alpha, beta, gamma, positron emissions, and transmutations of nuclei, one element turning into another. There you go. And then we're going to revisit half-life and radioactive decay and go a little bit deeper into it maybe than we did in Earth science. Yeah. So a transmutation, what is that? It's naturally occurring. Uh, it's an, when an atom becomes another element naturally, spontaneously, and therefore only has one reactant. This is occurring around you all the time, and it doesn't hurt you. No. No, 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 not at all. It happens with you, carbon-14. Right. My atoms have carbon... My Some of my atoms are carbon-14, and they're naturally radioactive, and they will naturally turn into not carbon-14, something else, and... Yeah. Nitrogen-14, I think, is what it does, right? Not exactly sure. We'll have to look into that, but... It is. That's later on. And the next thing is an artificial transmutation. Right. So that happens, too. We can actually force these things to do that. So this is when an atom becomes another element with the help of an outside force. And you can see in this picture that there's two reactants. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to hit it with, uh, is, it, is that some neutrons, probably? I guess in no, mass. No, that's a helium nuclei. Oh, that is the helium? Yeah, that's the equation. 4He2 plus 14N7. Yeah, the 20 was confusing me a little bit. I wasn't uh, sure what to do with that. Two zero, two neutrons. Oh, there you go. Oh, two zeros charges. There you go. Good call. I mean, you smart, Monaco. Too smart. Keeping you around for a while. Now, of the transmutations, the artificial ones, we have fission, which is what runs nuclear power reactors. And there it is. We have a very large, heavy nucleus, a uranium-235. Hit it with a neutron. Smack it with a neutron. Makes it unstable. And so it splits from the parent nucleus into the daughter nuclei, and, and more neutrons, neutrons, which is what makes the chain reaction occur. You put one neutron in, and that first step, you get three neutrons out, which, guess what, can go and hit three other parent nuclei. And each one is going to create three. Bing, 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 bing. So after a few steps of a chain reaction like this, all of a sudden it could go out of control. Boom. Yep. So, and then there's fusion. Fusion makes a little... To me, a little bit more sense because that's putting two things together if I fuse something. Mm -hmm. So here I take two nuclei and I kind of ram them together and they will form a bigger, heavier nucleus. And that's the fusion. Mm -hmm. You can see this bigger heliums coming out of the deuterium and tritium. Yep. And deuterium and tritium are isotopes of hydrogen. Correct. Hydrogen coming together to make helium. Yep. So, um... All of nuclear chemistry is underpinned by Albert Einstein's equation and its relations to, to transmutations. E equals mc squared. Duh. But what does it really mean? Well, E is energy, m is mass, and c is the speed of light. And so, what this really means in the end is that mass can be converted into pure energy. And we humans, around the turn of century, 1905, when Einstein published his paper, realized that it was possible. In the next 50 years, it took, almost, to actually make it happen Right. in a nuclear reactor and a nuclear bomb. Right. So the beautiful part about this now is a little bit of, little bitty, bitty, bitty mass makes a huge amount of energy. And we're talking a few protons and neutrons being converted into many, many, many joules of energy. Right. And it makes sense because in the fusion reaction that's happening in the sun creates an amazing amount of energy. We can huge. feel it on our skin. From a billion trillion miles away, or whatever. Right, it is. right. Ask an earth science teacher. <laughs> so, the bomb, just so you know how little mass gets converted into how much energy, the bomb that leveled Hiroshima and helped end right. the Second World War in the Pacific six. had around 55 kilograms of uranium in it. It's called a critical mass. You can need a certain amount to get a chain reaction to even go. Right. So, it had a lot of uranium in, in it, but after all the calculations were said and done, nuclear scientists have theorized that approximately 0 0.6 grams of that uranium that was in that bomb was actually converted into pure energy, leveling the entire city. Right, and bye-bye Hiroshima. Bye-bye Hiroshima, bye-bye many, many hundreds and not hundreds of thousands of people. Just literally evaporated. 
Yes. And the rest of that uranium that was in that bomb was spread out in nuclear fallout all over the place. It caused radioactive damage to people for many, many years. Yeah, to come. especially if it hits the, uh, the jet stream or something like that, it gets carried a long Across ways the fast. Planet. That's right. Uh, the nuclear reactors, on the other hand, like 20 miles away, Gine. we got one. Spelled really funny, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they control their chain reaction. They use it to heat the water. The water turns the turbines. The turbines, when they start moving, create electricity. And now we got a clean form of electricity other than that waste that's right. produced from the nuclear. So the same idea, chain reaction. Uncontrolled, kaboom, kabam, kabang, kapow, kabam. Controlled nuclear power. Correct. So small mass equals large energy in both scenarios. Yes. So I know a nuclear power plant might seem like a really expensive thing to do, but in reality, only a very small amount of mass is being used to create a huge amount of electricity for us. True. I mean, some of the ideas are very good. It's dealing with some of the problems that yeah. leave us with some issues. Sometimes we ain't so smart. Right. So nuclear power generation. Uh, here's a, some pictures, right, of a, a power plant. And there's one little picture of what's actually kind of going on inside. You can see the control rods yep. and where the actual fuel is. Mm -hmm. Those are the uranium rods, right? Yeah. And this concrete pressure vessel and the control rods and all the fuel elements and everything they're not inside those big hourglass shapes towers. No, 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 no. They're actually in one of these buildings down at the bottom yeah. of the picture. Those towers have to do with the heating of the water and the turn of the turbines. The cooling of the water, yeah, cooling the reaction off, controlling right. it better. Yep, yep, yep. So fission of uranium can be done in a controlled manner. You move the control rods in and out, speeds it up, slows it down. Fission reaction is controlled using those rods. Heat produced is used to create electricity. All the heat boils water, water steam turns turbines, turbines make electricity. True. True. Facts. Good. So hit up some pros and cons. All right, so the pros are basically no carbon dioxide emissions, so no CO2s. Greenhouse gases, those are a bad thing. We burn coal and other plants to boil the water real dirty, directly to the atmosphere. So that's bad. Uh, it is very efficient. A um, little bit of... A little bit of mass creates a whole bunch of energy. I don't need to burn tons and tons of coal. I just got to get a little bit of radioactive material to get moving. A few grams. A few grams. Um, the fuel source actually has a really long lifespan, so it takes a while for these fuel rods to actually be spent. And once they're spent, down, now that's your nuclear waste, and you have to deal with that in some way. It's going to stay radioactive, but it's not radioactive in a way that we use for fuel anymore. And... Overall, it becomes really cheap. I mean, it might cost a few billion dollars to build a power plant nowadays. But when you actually talk about what it takes once it's up and running to convert the radioactive material into energy, that part is where it's really cheap. Right, compared to gas power or uh, wind right. turbines coal, or all this other, all stuff. other stuff. Yeah, it, it is actually is really cheap. Cheap per watt. Right. If you really so break it down. That's what it is. So like, how much it, how much did this cost me to turn it into the energy? That part is actually cheap. The whole thing isn't necessarily cheap. And these suckers can run for 25, 30 years without really much changes. The cons are those waste rods. What do I do with them? Where do we store them? If we take them and take them all to one particular mountain, then they got to cross state lines. And now that's a huge issue with traveling with hazardous waste. It, it really gets complicated. What do you do? Cut down a forest and just pile it on a concrete pad in the mm -hmm. middle of the forest and put up no, a fence and say, hey... Don't um, come over here. Is that a Yucatan mountain? Or there's Yucca. Yucca mountain. Yucca, Yucca mountain? I thought it was Yucatan. No, that's a peninsula in, South oh. America, in Central America. Well, let's see how I am. Mm -hmm. uh, the waste is also very toxic for long periods of time. So once it's spent, that means it's no longer of grade to make energy. But that don't mean it's done being radioactive. This stuff is going to be radioactive until your grandkids, grandkids, and grandkids are done being around like millions of years yeah it's going to be radioactive for a really long time so now where do i do with that to and it's it highly concentrated in order to become a fuel rod in the first place right right so it's like it's super toxic and poisonous and there's a lot of it and there's plenty of it yeah yeah and then uh then there's just the general risks of running a power plant we've seen it recently in japan mm -hmm. when they had the tsunami and it messed up their plant yep um we we prophesize a lot here about how 
poorly guarded our nuclear plants actually are. Right, they're targets, for right? For terrorism, right? right. Somebody so the chance a of a meltdown or a runaway reaction is real. We've had a few in the past that you might see some movies on. Three Mile Island wasn't great. Chernobyl. Uh, Chernobyl was the biggest Ooh. bad one of them all. And, of course, this most recent Japan was not good either. And, actually, honestly, Mr. Milk's the Fukushima Daiichi in Japan was actually worse than Chernobyl. They just right. don't want us to know that. Right. Well, when you get into the science, it was real bad. It was worse than Chernobyl. Right. And they have – people won't be able to return their towns and villages for ever. ever. They're never going back. Not allowed. No. Nope. Just, like, just like – in. So some legit pros and cons. We got some nuclear medicine to cover, too. Yep. So some things can be used to treat cancer. So this is a pro of radioactivity. Sure. We got thyroid cancer, you, iodine 131. Yep, you got to know that, guys. Iodine goes for with thyroid sure. cancer. Cobalt 60 is good for radiation therapy. Yep. Uh, uranium we use for fission fuel cells. So as well as, yeah, uranium 238 as well as 235. Yep, both of them. So here's another pictogram if you want to study it a little carefully. More how carefully. your nuclear power reactor works. Yep. Like that one. And then carbon dating with carbon 14. I can tell how long them dinosaurs how long ago before they died? How long ago something that has organic material in it died? Right. But we yeah. use carbon-14 dating for those real long, long dates. Up to a certain period of time. Sure. Like, it's not good for rocks, but it's good for, like, mammoth bones. Right. We got some natural sources of radiation that are around us all the time. We consume carbon-14 in our food. Um, the Earth has plenty of uranium. Yep. Every single rock has uranium in it. Right. And then the sun is, isn't it a lot of gamma? Lots of gamma, lots, lots of ultraviolet, of gamma, lots, lots of different of types of radiation. But yep. yes. and you can feel it on your skin on a good, hot, sunny day. How do you think you got a sunburn? Really? Cosmic you got cooked. radiation. You got cooked mm -hmm. on some major energy. Yep. So that's really overview. Overview. We'll, we'll get some into purpose. some a little bit more specifics as we go. We're going to each time get a little bit more specific until we start writing symbols and doing a little bit of math. Right. Thanks for watching. <laughs>